my recent visit to Washington, D.C., I rediscovered the Smithsonian's Mary Livingston Ripley Garden. Welcome back to my channel, Her Quiet Passions. I'm Melissa, and I'm passionate about nature and plants. And I want to share with you this time about a garden that I visited in Washington, D.C. that is such a gem. It's called the Mary Livingston Ripley Garden. And I just love this. It's just a very small garden, but um, I want to show you these special features about it. It's like the horticulturist has um, designed it so that the, the, the contrast between the trees and the plants and the foliage and the, during the different seasons just explode in colors and textures and contrasts. It's, it's just amazing. There's going to be a special purple spike spiky plant that's related to tomatoes and some great big red bugs. So come along with me and enjoy this garden. If you've ever walked by the carousel on the National Mall heading east on Jefferson Drive, you, like myself, might be stopped in your tracks by this stunning little garden. It's tucked between the Arts and Industries Building and the Hirshhorn Museum. I was drawn in, transported by the artful juxtapositions of colors and textures. character and style to this garden is the large acanthus fountain, a late 19th century cast iron fountain from an unknown manufacturer which along with the benches and street lights and other unique 19th century furnishings come from the historical collection of the Smithsonian Gardens. This oasis of wonder is maintained nearly single-handedly by the Smithsonian horticulturist, Janet Draper. In some interviews I found, she said, I try to label everything and make myself available to questions for all the visitors. A garden is a piece of art that is constantly changing. I'm becoming much more of an ecological gardener, trying to teach people that plants can be much more than just something pretty. She goes on to say that she leaves bits and pieces of, for the birds as nesting materials, as well as small piles of leaves, which robins and other birds rummage through, looking for insects that are munching on the decaying leaves. Along with building bug houses for insects to overwinter in, she also leaves piles of twigs and stems in out of the way locations. While walking through this garden, I was enchanted by this trailing plant with the distinctive white silvery veins on the rounded leaves. And since then, I've done some research and found out that the white veined Dutchman's pipe vine is a host plant for the pipe vine swallowtail butterfly. In more reading, I found out that the caterpillar feeds on the plant eating the leaves all the way down to the ground while these caterpillars can eat the plant. Don't try it yourself. I promised some big red bugs and here they are. I ran across these milkweed bugs clustered on this world milkweed. One of the most exotic plants in the garden is this one, Solanum ketuens. I love how she planted this exotic crazy plant in the middle of more conventional perennials and annuals for this contrast, this big, bold contrast. It just stops you in your tracks. And even though it's spiky, you kind of want to touch it and see how sharp it is. 
called Naranjilla in South America. It's a tropical plant with these crazy purple spikes on the leaves and stems. I don't think any animal is going to be munching on this plant. Also, they bear orange fruits. They're kind of fuzzy, like a, like a kiwi, um, that has bright green juice. And sometimes that's described as a combination between rhubarb and lime. I would like to try that. I want to talk about this wall that's running the entire length along one side of this garden. Now, I just have a thing about walls and gardens. Like, I think it's romantic. I think about walled gardens as private sanctuaries, um, a backdrop for silhouettes of plants and so forth. And I think they've used the wall really effectively in this garden. So check out the trees and the, and the plants here. For me, this garden is just eye candy. The blue bird bath, the caladiums, the pink caladiums, the strappy leafed platilia, and um, the red begonias, the variegated strap leaves. I just love all of it. The fine texture of the Mexican weeping bamboo, These apricot-colored dahlias in front of this deep burgundy shrub that I don't know the name of. I love these big, I don't know why I would call it elephant ears. Of course, the bees love the salvias. So I don't know all these plants from back east, being from California. The palm trees. What a, what a collection of plants. I am really enjoying this garden with all its textures. We've taken a journey through the Mary Livingston Ripley Garden, and now we're at the end, spit out onto Independence Avenue. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that you'll know when I post my latest videos.